Austin Sendrick, no, 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 more like Austin Wendrick. He wins a weird NASCAR Cup Series race at Gateway. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. I'll try to talk about everything that happened in the NASCAR Cup Series race today as long as Fox showed it, which seems to be a bit of an issue on Sunday at Gateway. It was a weird race. I, I feel like Gateway might be the most forgettable track on the schedule. Decent crowd, always there. Seems like the crowd, uh, like Gateway does a great job with the fan zone, getting the crowd in the stands and everything like that. The racing, the first two years was eh. Today, the racing was better in a sense nascar does not classify this 1.25 mile flat track as a short track they classified as an intermediate so the short track package was not used on this track which maybe was for the best i'm not entirely sure but austin Cendrick picks up his second nascar cup series victory he will no longer be known as just a guy that won the daytona 500 in his rookie year sorry trevor bain austin Cendrick picks up his win second win first one of the season and kind of gets himself off the hot seat now right i know his dad's the president over at team penske but the guy has been uh, less than lackluster since his daytona 500 victory back in 2022 as a rookie he picked up his second career win because ryan blaney runs out of gas coming to the white flag just an absolutely brutal break for last year's defending champion. He got out of the car and he had what appeared to be an entire bag of chaw in his mouth. I think it might have been bubblegum. But if, if that was all tobacco, that boy put the entire can right into his mouth. That was would be aggressive if that's what it was. Cindric picks up his second win. Like I said, he goes on to lead 53 of the 240 laps on Sunday. Massive win for him. Came into the day 20th in the point standings. He now leaves locked into the playoffs. We're not going to have more than 16 winners. It's just not going to happen as much as people maybe want to will it into existence. It won't happen. So Austin Cindric puts himself in. He becomes the second Ford driver to officially lock themselves in, in addition to Brad Keselowski. It appeared, like I said, that Blaney was going to be the one to do it. He led 20 laps, and it didn't look like he was going to win this race either because Chris Rebell, with about 18 laps to go, was making the move to pass ryan blaney although we were too busy looking at uh, a young joe dirt and sid from toy story in the grandstands while this battle was happening because fox just wanted to show the children for some unknown reason bell gets by blaney and then immediately comes over the radio and he's like i don't have any power and the car started to blow up he was able to limp it home for a seventh place finish leading a race high 80 laps on sunday at one point he had his teammate martin Truex jr bump drafting him down the back stretch like a ricky bobby cal Naughton jr type of situation a little shake and bake action and he would just roll up and hit bell and it helped him out to the tune of like half a second a lap at time so that worked out pretty well until martin was like all right buddy i gotta go i can't keep doing this all day i'm not jimmy johnson pushing chase elliott to victory lane so he bailed on him and went around. It was an odd final 18 laps for the most part. I mean, you, when you have Bell blow up, it looks like he's going to be the clear winner on Sunday. He had the best car. Um, best car was able to pass people. He was definitely the guy. Then it looks like Blaney's going to win. And Austin Sinder's going to run second. A 1-2 for Team Penske after they had an absolutely abysmal day in Detroit in the IndyCar race where Will Power served five of the 13 penalties that were issued during that race. Joseph Newgarden had a bad day. Scott McLaughlin stuffed it in the tires. Just a bad day all around for Penske up in Detroit. And you're like, okay, they're going to rebound here with a 1-2. Nope, not to be. Austin Sindrick, meanwhile, picks up the win. Blaney comes home 24th. Not exactly ideal there. The broadcast uh, left a lot to be desired. Gateway is known for having a massive pyrotechnic show on the pace lap. They shoot flames four stories into the air. It looks like the Manhattan Project is happening on the backstretch. The cameras just couldn't find it. Just didn't even show it during the parade laps. Baffling move because it's a track that's literally known for this. This is their tradition. They blow things up on the backstretch. No, we saw it in replay after a caution uh, on lap five, thanks to Cody Ware for bringing out the first two cautions of the day. Yeah, Cody Ware's in the race. You wouldn't have known that, except he kept bringing out the cautions early. Has no business being out there. But Fox missed the pyrotechnic show. And then we saw it in replay, kind of like how we see every pass for the lead, every battle they're talking about. And then a little bit later on into the race, early in the race still, we hear the booth proclaim Josh Berry is off the pace. He's slow down the front stretch. And apparently the production truck was like, yeah, stuff it. We're not showing it because they never showed Josh Berry off the pace and no mention of it after that. We also had a situation where Mike Joyce screamed in excitement and he goes, oh, and Ty Gibbs nearly ran over his pit crew member. 
didn't see that live. Why would we? We went back and eventually watched it in replay. But to have one of your announcers scream like that and then not cut to what he's screaming about is super frustrating. And then at the end of the race, they're talking to the drivers and they have the scroll going at the bottom, the running order, the finishing order rather. And we had Kaz Grala in the 15. He was not in this race. In fact, that was Cody Ware. We had Shane Van Gisbergen in the 16. Again, he was not in this race. He wasn't even in this state. He won the race in Portland on Saturday for the Xfinity Series. It was instead Derek Krause in this race. And then we had Justin Allgaier in the number five car, which again, not even in the same state as these guys today because Kyle Larson was driving the five car. Once again, that just uh, not a banner day for Fox. They have one more race this season, that being Sonoma uh, next weekend, and then they hand off to NBC on June 16th at Iowa. And I think it's probably a good time to have like a breath of fresh air. And don't get me wrong, by the time we get to the playoffs, we're all going to be sick of NBC. That's just what's going to happen. The only, the only bright spot on the NBC portion of the schedule is the fact that one, it's going to be a new voice in two weeks and that'll wear off by, I don't know, lap 150 at Iowa, is the fact that we're getting Lee Diffie as well. That's massive. On Sunday, though, we had Kyle Larson, the um, not self-appointed, but appointed greatest race car driver right now America has to offer, get loose underneath Kyle Busch, and Kyle kind of threw a hissy fit. They were banging fenders going down the front stretch. Kyle tried to pinch him down, and Kyle Busch tried to pinch Kyle Larson down. Larson ends up losing the rear, spins out, takes Kyle Busch with him, and Kyle Busch gets the worst of it, and Larson's able to rebound for a 10th place finish. Kyle Busch, meanwhile, is credited with a 35th place finish. Abysmal day for him after running in the top five and leading 15 laps on Sunday, so not ideal for him. After losing Josh Berry, or never showing Josh, where is Josh? Kind of like the Dave Chappelle, where is Josh? Where is Josh? Type of situation. Where is Josh? Never saw him until he finally did actually blow a tire, a left front by the looks of it, and slammed into the turn three wall. His day was done after that. I did take in my notes right here. Sometimes Clint Boyer sounds like a Flintstones character when he's like, ha 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 ha, like that. It just reminds me of like Barney Rubble trying to laugh in that really bad live action Flintstones movie, which I'll definitely watch again at some point. Overall, weird day at Gateway. I think, like I said, I think Gateway is a forgettable race on the schedule. Nothing exciting really ever happens here. The track isn't exactly conducive to great racing, but at the end of the day, it produced a weird and wacky race. Multiple different strategies. Absolutely love that playing out, although I don't think the broadcast exactly knew how to call that uh, different strategy happening. At one point, that that Michael McDowell was going to try to run 93 laps to the finish. That was just never happening, but don't stop Boyer from getting all excited about it. So, yeah, I... Th- liked what I saw do I am I excited for 2025 not necessarily at Gateway but you know maybe it's not the most forgettable race on the schedule at this point it's like Richmond Gateway New Hampshire those three kind of all in the same spot of being like nah, we could watch it we could not watch it we don't have to go back there we can if you want to but at the end of the day if they're not on the schedule people aren't going to be like bring back Gateway they're just not So let me know in the comments what you thought about the race. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.